Okay, the first thing we'll do is we'll launch ProSoft Configuration Builder. We'll right click on Default Module, choose Module Type. We'll select the PLX30 group, and then we'll scroll down and we'll check the EIP PND gateway. We'll expand that. Then we'll go down to the Ethernet configuration and we'll assign it an IP address. I'm going to use 10.12.2.10 and my gateway is going to be 10.12.2.1. Click OK. Now we'll go to the PND section, the Profinet device section. And I'm not going to change anything here, just take a note of the addresses. And then I'll click on the PND module map. Now here I'm going to go ahead and add four rows. This is for two Ethernet. I this is this is so we can set up for two I/O connections. So in the first row, I'll assign this as 256 bytes of input, and then 256 bytes of output, and then again 256 bytes of input. and 256 bytes of output. Click OK, click OK again. And now we'll set up the class one Ethernet IP connection. So we'll go into connection one. Remember we were in bytes earlier and these are words. So 256 divided by two, we got 128, and then 128 for the output size. And then for connection two, we'll do the same thing, but notice the starting address. We are going to start at 128 now. And then 2128 for the output data address. And 128 for your outputs. And that's it. Now we'll go ahead and download. So we'll right click. We'll choose download PC to device. And if you don't know the IP address, you can click on Browse and it'll send a broadcast out and show the available gateways on your network, PLX30 gateways. And mine's at 10.12.2.10. Choose Download. And the download's done. The module's running. Okay, so we're done here. Let's go ahead and open up Step 7. So we'll click on New Project Wizard. We'll click Next. Now you choose your processor type. I am using a 315-2 PNDP. Give it a name. Click on next. And then we'll give the product a name or project a name rather. And click on finish. All right. Now from here what we'll do is we will click on Somatic 300 Station, then we'll click on Hardware, double click on Hardware, and it'll open up our Hardware window. Then from here we click on Options, go down to Install GSD File because the GSD is not installed with the software, you have to manually install it. Once it's there, it's there, so you don't only, only have to do this once. Browse to the location where you downloaded the ProSoft GSD file. You'll select the file, just keep clicking next. I already have it installed, so it's going to throw up a few cautions. And I just keep clicking next and yes. And you can go ahead and read the errors if you wish, but basically it's giving me a caution, letting know that it's going to overwrite. And then once it's done, click on close. Okay, from here we will right click on PNIO. We will choose Insert Profinet Network. We'll change the IP address to that of what we want the CPU to be. So this is your CPU's IP address. And whether you're using a router or not. I'm using a router, so I'm going to go ahead and enter those in. And then you'll click on New for New Network, and then click OK. And then that'll add your Profinet I.O. system, or Profinet Network. Now what we'll do, we'll go to the I.O. tree on the right, or the catalog tree. We'll expand Profinet I.O. and all the way down to additional field devices in the PLX31. We'll drag it over. 
Now we'll double click on the PLX31 and we'll change the name. But you know what? First, I want to make sure that I'm not stepping on anyone else. So we want to make sure we have a unique name on the network. So we'll choose a signed device ID or device name, and it'll open up a window that'll show us the different devices on the network. So those are the two names currently on my network, and I'm using test five right now, but I'm going to go ahead and change that. So I'll click close, double click again. Now I'm going to change this to PLX31 test six. Then I'll click on Ethernet. I'll change the IP address to that I want my PND to be. And then we'll click OK. And I'm going to change the device number to two. And then click OK. Now what we're going to do is click on download. And we'll quickly download this to the PLC. So click on the download button. The window is going to pop up. You can click on the view button here. And it will pop up the accessible nodes that you can download to or PLCs you can download to. Here we see that my CPU 315 is there. I'm going to choose OK. Now here's a key step we have to do. We have to assign a device name. So click on PLC, Ethernet node, assign device name. And when the window pops up, be sure that you check the appropriate gateway that you're configuring. There's mine right there with 5e as the last octet of the MAC address. I'll click assign name and you'll see it'll change to test 6. That's it. Click close. Now I'll arrange the screen a little bit so we can assign some I.O. to the gateway. And just like we did in PCB, we're going to choose 256 bytes of input, 256 bytes of output, and again 256 bytes of input, and 256 bytes of output. That's it. That's all we do. Now we'll click PLC. We'll click download, click OK, and now everything should be up and running. Now let's go ahead and open RS Logics, last step of the process. I'm going to start with a new project. So I'll click on new, choose the appropriate processor. I'm using an L36, give it a name, click finish. And I'm going to right click on Ethernet, choose new module. Now I'm going to type in generic and choose the generic bridge. Give that a name. Put in the IP address of my gateway. Click OK. Click OK again. Now I'll right click on CIP bus, on, on SIP bus. And I'm going to choose the SIP module. So double click on the SIP module or just click create. And then we'll give that a name, connection one, choose data int or the data type that you wish to use. And then for the assembly instance, one, two, and four. And then remember the IO sizes that we chose, 128 words or 256 bytes. And then I'm just gonna copy this guy. So copy and paste. So now we have two IO connections set up to the gateway. And now I'm going to choose communication, who active, Choose my processor, which is 10.12.2.21, and then download. And once the download goes through, hopefully that IO light will stop flashing. And I'll place it back into run, and everything looks to be good. So let's go ahead and take a look at some data, see if we're moving data across appropriately. So I'll go into the controller tags, the Profinet device output data, and I'll just go ahead and manipulate some data here. So I'll change output words 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we'll open up step 7, and we'll take a look at some variables. We'll create a little variable table here. And first, I need to know the addresses that I'm using. So remember, 128 is the starting address for your inputs and starting address for your outputs. So let's go back to the variable window, variable table. There we go. Okay, and I will go ahead and create some variables here. 
So the first input that I had was an input word starting at 128. And you know what? I sh I'm going to go ahead and create a few of these. So I'll insert a range of variables. So input word starting at word 130 for length of five. Now I'm going to create my outputs starting at 28, change the format to decimal, and then there you go. Now we'll go ahead and click on the monitor button or the glasses up there, and there you see the values. And let me go ahead and change this to decimal. All right. So there are the values match up to what we had entered in Logics. Now let's just make sure that they're going through correctly. We'll go ahead and change them one more time. I'll just put in 54321 and then go back to step 7. And there's 5432. So let's go back to RS Logic, see why that one's not showing up. So let's see, let's go back to logics. And apparently I forgot to press enter. <laughs> so let me go ahead and press enter. And then quickly back to step seven and we should, there we go, there's our one. Okay, now for the output data. Let's go ahead and manipulate some output data. We'll click the modify button, modify our modified value or write our modified value and then we'll go back to RS logics and for that we'll open up our profinet input data and there we go and that's it for this training session till next time happy training Bye.